being a sucker. A sucker is someone who is who is who is overtly cooperative, cooperative and good-hearted enough that people take advantage of them. So they don't have an edge saying, "What are the actual interests here? Are mine being met or theirs? And do I trust them to do what they say they're going to do?" So there, there's a risk in being a, a sucker, and then there's being so cooperative that people kind of take your stuff and walk off with it. Uh, the other side of that, though, is is to be so fearful that you're going to be taken advantage of, that there's an opportunity to do, to do collaborative effort with someone that you miss out on. So the question is, if you don't want to be a sucker, and you don't want to be a person who is so fearful that something awful will happen that you never enter into an agreement with someone else, well, it's like most of these things. It's kind of it's all depends. And the all depends is, is some capacity to look at a situation and say, what's my balance here? What's my balance here between not being a sucker and not being so fearful that I, I don't take advantage of what the collaboration of the combination of knowledge might, uh, might, might, might occur? Uh, Kurt and I were in a seminar yesterday with consultants uh, from out of the state talking about Web 2.0. The belief is, is that there is a capacity there to, because of the capacity to share information that there are models for cooperating and making joint con contributions on an effort that we haven't even started to touch on yet. And what hasn't been answered in that is how the sucker versus the fearful person uh, winds their way and winnows their way through all of that to, to find their way towards something. So kind of the punchline for my course is, how do you estimate in any given situation the balance between, or am I being taken advantage of, or am I missing an opportunity? And that's something that it takes some time to do. The, the belief what Symatech was is the people who went there had kind of both technical knowledge and a self-concept self that was strong enough that said, I can take a risk here and I can recover if I, I find someone is a, trying to rake more than their share of the marbles off the table at the, at the end of the day. So, um, I do, I know you're also doing some other research as well and uh, I'd like to know what are the next research they will be working on, or if you have any new book that's coming out. I'm, uh, I have a, a we, myself and a, a group of Norwegian researchers, I did a series of interviews a few years ago, and it's essentially a, a pedestrian book of how people use information communication technologies. And it's a set of 19 stories about how people use the phone, the computer, uh, and all the derivatives of that in the workplace. And it uh, will be out for sale. Uh, I think that they're printing the book. I just sent the galley copies back literally yesterday. Uh, it's the, the, the book is being produced in India uh, by an international company. And I think they said we're going to have copies ready by the 1st of February. Or so it's a series of stories about how one of my interests is narratives, and narratives are how, how you take the kind of the wider collection of things that are going on that don't fit into a scientific model and say what's taking place here. And what we've learned in the last 25 years is a story is kind of the best way of doing that. And so for the, most of the last 20 years, I've been focusing on how people's uh, narratives take place in, uh, in, the, in the work environment and what effect they have and how people use them. So this is a grand version of one story. Uh, we have 19 stories in this book that's uh, coming out, uh, and uh, so that's uh, that, that will be out in February. Uh, that's kind of the applied version of the book, and I'm working on the theoretical version uh, right now with a with a uh, professor from the University of Paris, and uh, we're meeting in Montreal uh, in a couple of weeks to spend 10 days on it. Another 10 <coughs> days in January before school starts, and uh, we have 40,000 words out of a 100,000 word book, and. It's going kind of slow. <laughs> but you may have had projects that went slow sometime. So uh, I see that the grins that you know what I'm talking about. Uh, how, in your experience with Simitag, it, it seemed like you were saying that upper level leadership was necessary to drive the uh, collaboration. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's necessarily um, true in internal discussion as well? So, there's a project you've done, does it have to be driven by leadership or can it be driven uh, from the grassroots? 
Well, there are lots of examples. I mean, the, the, that's a nice, seamless case where I tell about how the vertically integrated leadership was. Some of the most effective work groups I've ever started, the most cohesive ones, the most effective ones, were ones that had lousy supervisors. So you really can't, you really can't say that. It's nice when it happens when it's vertically integrated, but there are, there are patches of productivity all over the place that happen from the bottom up that someone produces something or does something or says, look what we can do together and let's go present our results. And so there are, there are lots of cases of that as well. More questions? So again, thank you guys for coming and I uh, apologize, Kurt, I forgot to introduce you. Kurt is actually a friend of mine and uh, he is uh, currently a PhD student uh, with Professor Dr. Larry Brown. So thank you for him to come here to today. And uh, well, uh, the book Cinematech is uh, the limit copy of this chapter that Dr. Brown uh, covered is available here. So when you're on the way out, or you can uh, take a look at it, and uh, it is also available on uh, uh, Amazon.com. So, so you guys uh, can. It's very interesting, and I know that Kurt is also doing uh, some research regarding uh, collaborating with uh, global engineers in the uh, semiconductor industry, which he would study uh, the people that the engineer that is English is not their first language, and he's going to find ways to improve communication with them and the native English speaker. So um, I'm hoping that you will be able to uh, come uh, get a chance to come to a company and do some uh, study uh, throughout or, uh, some of the uh, activity that's going on. And so um, again, thank you guys for coming and uh, appreciate your support and we look forward for events like this in the future. Thank you very much.